Welcome to this sermon video of Atwood United Church and Trinity United Church in North Perth, Ontario. My name is Beth Curran. I am the minister for these two congregations, and I am delighted to connect with you today through the wonders of technology. In support of the stay-at-home order currently in effect in Ontario, this is recorded from my home in Listowel. If you are watching the fuller video that will be posted after worship on Sunday with music, please know that the hymns were pre-recorded earlier in the summer and fall and are being reused so that we do not need to ask our musicians and singers to record new music during the stay-at-home order. Both church buildings are com currently completely closed at this time, except for those who are designated to get the mail, check for building integrity, and provide essential services like banking. If you are not one of those people, please do not enter the church building even if you have a key. I will be working entirely from home unless a funeral with less than 10 people comes up. So please do not hesitate to contact me as I'm here for support in these strange times. If you are looking for a more interactive service, you are also welcome to join us Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. on Zoom. And if you need the Zoom login instructions, please contact me. We gather here as a community of seekers looking for light the light that will give us clarity, the light that will renew our hope, the light that will guide our way, the light that will show us the truths of God with us. May epiphany be not just a word, but a gasp of wonder at the promise revealed. Amen. Call to worship today is by our moderator Richard Bott. Every second of every minute, every minute of every hour, every hour of every day is God's. Every breath we take, every heart that beats, every laugh lived, every tear dropped is God's. Gift of the Creator, gift of the Christ, gift of the Spirit alive gift of God. And so we are joyful, and so we are grateful, and so we are here to worship God. Let us pray. This prayer is by Ted Dodd. Son of Joseph, child of God, we give thanks that good things can come from Nazareth, that holiness can emerge from the unexpected, that blessing can show up in surprising ways, that the extraordinary can develop from the most ordinary of circumstances. Teach us to set aside our prejudiced judgments, to forego our narrow assumptions, to unlock ourselves for new perspectives and new life. Help us to come and see, to listen and learn, to open ourselves to epiphany. Amen. And our opening hymn is Praise with Joy, the World's Creator.
And our prayer of confession is by Alison Abbott Weeb. Searching and seeking God, you alone are aware of the very deepest of the shadowed and secret places of our hearts. Those places that we hold words we have feared to share aloud because they tell a story of turning away from you and from others. Instead of turning towards the places of hurtful words, good deeds left undone, sin filled chaos and misery in this world. Forgive us for all these wrongs and shortcomings, eternal one. We seek your mercy, compassion, and forgiveness. Our source of strength and our refuge, to you we offer now our own personal prayers of confession in a time of shared silence. Attend to us, O God, and in your love answer, we pray. Amen. Receive the good news. When we come to God just as we are, honest, broken, and afraid, we will be met with open, loving arms of mercy. God is noticing us, listening, forgiving, and loving us each and every day. Thanks and praise be to God. Amen. God, you have searched out my deepest places. You know what lies in my depth. You know my sitting down and rising up. You know how to shepherd me from afar. My paths and night thoughts, you sift through them. You know all my roads, for th there has been no word on my tongue that behold, you did not know it beforehand. From front and behind, you encompassed me. You laid your hand upon me in protection. Wondrous beyond words is your knowledge. It remains inaccessible beyond my grasp. Where can I hide from your breath? From before your presence, where can I flee? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I lie down in the grave, behold, you are there too. If I lift myself on the wings of sunrise, if I dwell in the western seas, there also your hand will guide me. You hold me upright with the strength of your right arm. I have said surely darkness will bruise me, but suddenly night became a surrounding glow. Even darkness does not hide you from me. Night like day illumines, darkness and light no difference. For you know my deepest emotions. You pulled me from my mother's womb. I thank you. I thank you for your wonders are breathtaking. Your deeds a constant source of awe. My soul knows it well. Our scripture today is from John 1 verses 35 to 50. The next day, John was standing again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus walking along, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard what he said, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he asked, What are you looking for? They said, Rabbi, which is translated teacher, where are you staying? Jesus replied, Come and see. So they went and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two disciples who heard what John said and followed Jesus was Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter. He first found his own brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated Christ, and he led him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The next day Jesus wanted to go into Galilee, and he found Philip. Jesus said to him, Follow me. Philip was from Bethesda, the hometown of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found one of the one Moses wrote about in the Law and the Prophets, Jesus, Joseph's son from Nazareth. Nathanael replied, Can anything from Nazareth be good? Philip said, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said about him, Here is a genuine Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, 
how do you know me? Jesus answered, before Philip called you, I saw you under the fig tree. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are God's son. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. I assure you that you will see heaven open and God's angels going up and down to earth on the human one. May God bless to us this reading from Holy Scripture. Amen. On Friday, I had two-thirds of a sermon about call written. The other lectionary passage for this week is the marvelous story of the call of Samuel, where Samuel hears God's voice calling in the night and mistakes it for his mentor Eli. However, I could not finish that sermon, and I was not enthused about it. It was fine, but nothing more. So I decided to begin again, and instead of preaching about call, this morning you get a sermon explicitly about faith practice during a stay-at-home order. For anyone tuning in from outside Ontario, this week Ontario entered a new phase in our response to the COVID-19 pandemic, when the government issued a stay-at-home order, effective from this past Thursday for at least 28 days, in response to rising cases and the pressure that is being felt by our healthcare system. That means that except for essential purposes, we are all being asked to stay at home for the next four weeks. So then, as a person of faith, how do we practice our faith during a stay at home order? Well, first, we cooperate with the order as best we are able without looking for loopholes or personal exceptions. As Christians, we are called to care about how our actions impact others. With a virus like this, the choices we make about how big we allow our circle of contacts to be affect not just us and our families, but the community as a whole. Our community, once community transmission gains momentum, the consequences for vulnerable populations will be felt for weeks. And the only way to reduce that transmission is to dramatically reduce our in-person contacts. We, we, are see, <coughs> we are seeing that here in North Perth. For whatever reason, COVID got a foothold here, and in spite of our best efforts to control it, 52 of the almost 111 active cases, 52, which is almost half of the 111 active cases in the Huron Perth Health Unit, as of Friday, were right here in North Perth. While North Perth represents only about 13% of the population of Huron Perth Health Unit. As people of faith, we need to remember that whatever you do to the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you do to me. Each of us has a part to play in reducing the spread of this virus in our community. Second, we need to acknowledge how difficult a stay-at-home order is for us as human beings. One thing that stands out for me in the Gospel story I just read is how many times someone says, come and see. This story, like most Bible stories, is very relationship-based. Jesus calls disciples, they come and experience his teaching, they tell their friends who also come and experience what Jesus is like. As human beings, we are built for relationships and we thrive best in community, face-to-face -face community wherever possible. So each person will feel the effects of this challenging request to stay at home differently. Many of us may find that we are riding an emotional roller coaster, doing fine one moment, wanting to cry the next feeling angry and resentful and wanting to find someone to blame, feeling a lack of motivation, not sleeping or sleeping all the time, feeling grateful for small gifts, being anxious and afraid or dumb, and so on. We are being asked to do a very difficult thing and our faith doesn't require us to pretend that it isn't hard. In this regard, perhaps the Psalms of Lament and the Book of Lamentations might be resources for us. Our faith tradition has a rich heritage of pouring out to God all of our frustration, our pain, our anger, so that it might be held in God's loving care. Consider these words from Lamentations. The memory of my suffering and homelessness is bitterness and poison. I can't help but remember, and I am depressed. I call all this to mind, therefore I will wait. Certainly the faithful love of God hasn't ended. Certainly God's compassion isn't through. They are renewed every morning. Great is your faithfulness. If you are having a really difficult day, try telling God about it in explicit detail. 
Swear words are allowed if they're part of your vocabulary when you're ready to explode. God is able to handle our despair, our grief, our anger, our frustration, and our sorrow. Third, we need to be creative about connecting to others in whatever way is available to us at this time. If we have computers or phones or other technolo technological means of connection, we should absolutely use those. However, I'm reminded that in the Bible, letter writing is a key way in which Christian communities stayed in touch with one another across great distances. I'm picturing the Apostle Paul in prison writing letters to various faith communities he helped to nurture throughout the Roman Empire. I think about the opening passages of Paul's letter to the church in Philippi, written in part to thank them for sending him a generous support while he was in prison. From Paul and Timothy, slaves of Christ Jesus, to all those in Philippi who are God's people in Christ Jesus, along with your supervisors and servants. May the grace and peace from God and Jesus the Christ be with you. I thank my God every time I mention you in my prayers. I'm thankful for all of you every time I pray, and it's always a prayer full of joy. I'm glad because of the way that you have been my partners in the ministry of the gospel from the time you first believed until now. I'm sure about this. The one who started a good work in you will stay with you to complete the job by the day of Jesus Christ. I have good reason to think this way about all of you because I keep you in my heart. You are all my partners in God's grace, both during my time in prison and in the defense and support of the gospel. God is my witness and I feel affection for all of you with the compassion of Christ Jesus. How can you keep those who fill you with joy close to your heart? In what ways can you tell others that you are thankful for them? In a similar way, I think that we can do much good in these stressful times by making a point to be kind to anyone we do meet when we are out and about on essential errands. Speak a kind word to the grocery store person who cleans the carts. Offer a thank you to the pharmacist. Say hello to people you meet when out for a walk. Compliment someone on their colorful or fun mask. Many of us are longing for human connection. Let's make sure that even the briefest of connections that we do have are filled with compassion and care for one another. Fourth, don't be afraid to help one another. One of the essential reasons that we are allowed to leave our homes is to assist others. Check on your neighbors and friends and church community. Run to the grocery store or the pharmacy for those in isolation or who otherwise cannot easily get there themselves. Encourage those who are having a rough time. As Paul goes on to write in his letter to the Philippians, instead of each person watching out for their own good, watch out for what is better for others. At times like this, we need to be extra intentional about watching out for one another's good. Fifth, do what you can. Few things are more devastating to the human spirit than powerlessness. And there is lots about this situation that we are powerless to control. We don't control the virus. We don't control the decisions of our governments. We don't control the actions of other people. However, we can choose to do small things that bring out the best in us. What that is will be different for each of us and may well change from day to day. But often simply deciding to proactively do something can be a powerful choice in the midst of this kind of situation. So go for a walk, phone a friend, do something creative, read a book, do a puzzle, do something to care for your home, even if it is as mundane as a sink full of dishes or sweeping a floor. Make a snack, watch your favorite laugh out loud funny movie, and bonus marks if you can get a member of your household or a good friend on FaceTime or Zoom to do it with you. I'm reminded of the second letter, of the second letter to Timothy where Paul writes, God didn't give us a spirit that is timid but one that is powerful, loving, and self-controlled. When you feel overwhelmed, it can be extremely helpful to do whatever small thing is within your power. Finally, practice gratitude. Thankfulness is not just a feeling, but also a way of engaging with the world. Look for the things you can be grateful for in each day. They may be small, even tiny. I think of a little boy who collapsed in a heap at the end of our laneway while waiting for his mother and little brother to catch up during a walk. 
Both Sarah and I smiled to see this child being, well, frankly, childlike. I think of the cardinal outside my window as I was writing this sermon. I think of snuggles with a purring cat, the relaxation of a hot shower at the end of the day, the first sip of hot coffee in the morning, the joy of finishing a good book, and so much more. You don't have to be grateful for this pandemic. You don't have to be grateful for the stay-at-home order. You can acknowledge all the ways in which the current reality is hard and not the way we want things to be. Yet at the same time, if you can find small glimmerings of joy in the ordinary moments of your day, you will be the richer for it. As the psalmist writes in Psalm 118, this is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. So friends, this is a difficult time for many of us, but we can do this. As we journey through this stay at home time, let us remember what Jesus said was the way of life at the heart of the gospel. Love God with everything you've got. Love yourself as fully as you are able and love your neighbor as yourself. May love prevail this day. Amen. So let us join our hearts in prayer. Holy God, source of light and love, as we gather this day, we pause to give thanks. We give thanks for the wonders of creation, for new fallen snow and sunshine, for starry nights and playful squirrels, for the nip of frost on our noses, and for the promise of things yet living under layers of snow. We give thanks for the wonders of human love, for those who share our households with us, for friends and family we long to see, for those we are connected to through social networks and online means, for our church community, for the kindness of strangers. We give thanks for your never changing presence with us when we are angry and when we are joyful, when life is easy and when it is hard when we are filled with regret and when we are embracing new possibilities, when we are grieving and when we are laughing. Without your presence, we don't know how we would cope with the ups and downs of life. We join our hearts this day in prayer for many places of struggle in our community and in our world. We pray for our neighbors to the south as they face a transition of power that has been challenged by the threat of violence. May peace prevail. We pray for everyone coping with COVID this day, for those who have tested positive, especially those in hospital, for those who are in isolation in care homes and other community living settings where there are outbreaks, for those who are waiting for test results, for those who are in isolation because of close contact with someone who has tested positive. We pray for our medical system, for doctors and nurses, for cleaners and support staff, for personal support workers and home care providers, for cooks and laundry workers, for pharmacists and vaccine manufacturers, for contact tracers and public health staff, and for everyone else who plays a role in our multifaceted health care. We pray for the people of Indonesia as they struggle with the aftermath of an earthquake there this week, and for all others who are coping with natural disasters. 
We pray for students and teachers and parents who continue to wrestle with the challenges of online learning. We add now the prayers of our own hearts, praying for Lorene, for everyone in caressant care, for Rick and Eileen, for Devin and Alana, for Gord, for Robin and Murray, for Betty Jane, for Diane. Loving God, help us to be part of your answer to the prayers of the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus, who invited his friends to, friends to pray together, saying, Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And our blessing today is by Julie Seymour. She entitled it, A Blessing for Those with Stress-Induced Lethargy. In the muscle-tensed, frenetic exhaustion of your blank stare, may you know that you are not alone. In the numb, doom-scrolling hours, may your senses be drawn towards peace and joy. In the overwhelm of grief and frustration, may you be anchored in the truth of eternal love. In the push to pretend things are normal, may you have the strength to resist platitudes and false hope. In the knowledge that there is a right side of history, may you be guided and strengthened in the choices of justice and righteousness. In the still of the night when you hear your name, may you be guided to say, speak, Holy One, for your child is listening. In the quiet after you speak, in that stillness, may the love that has carried you this far lead you on. Amen.
Now, as we end this time of worship together, we extinguish the Christ candle, remembering that we, each of us, carry the light of God with us into the world today and always. Amen.